The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Former New York Jets defensive lineman and current CBS Sports NFL analyst, LeJay Doosable, revealed his perfect Jets draft for all seven rounds. Agree or disagree with the former Jet? We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Welcome in, Jet fans. Appreciate all of you for tuning in here on this Wednesday morning. If you're watching live, do me a favor. Help support the show by simply clicking that thumbs up button. If you're not watching live, hit it anyway. It goes a long way towards this channel continuing to grow. Hopefully you enjoyed the shows yesterday with Matt O'Leary and the absolute rant that needed to happen against the just Tom foolery from Colin Cowherd and what he said about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. In today's show, we're going to hear from a former New York Jet, one of our favorites. He's been on the show a bunch. We had him on in person at Radio Row back in February at the Super Bowl. Leger Doosable, former Jet, now of course with CBS Sports, he put out the perfect mock draft for his New York Jets. Leger made a pick for all seven rounds. So without further ado, we're going to play it and then react and get your thoughts here on the show. So here is Leger Doosable on CBS Sports HQ with his perfect Jets draft. This is what the perfect draft for my New York Jets looks like. In the first round, the Jets get who I feel is the best receiver in the draft, Roma Dunze. Now, the Jets did sign Mike Williams this offseason, but he may not be ready to play when camp starts. Next, the Jets select safety Cole Bishop, who can play in the box, but also has the skill set to play middle field safety. Pick 111, the Jets select Michael Pratt as a developmental quarterback. Pick 134, the Jets select Justin Eboibi, who has the versatility to play on the edge and base downs, but also rush inside on passing downs. Pick 185. The Jets get a wide back, ex receiver Tyrone Tracy, who's now a running back, but also a really good return man. Pick 256, Kylan Grable is an athletic tackle with upside. And pick 257, Mr. Irrelevant. The Jets get some edge help with Nelson Cesar. So that's Leger Doosable with his perfect mock draft for the New York, New York Jets. Now, I love the first pick he made with Roma Dunze. If he's truly there and Leger thinks he's the best receiver in the draft, then you know what? I have no issue with the Jets taking him. Yes, they still need depth on the offensive line. You have to hope that they could solve that with some more veteran signings like a David Bakhtiari, Donovan Smith, Connor McGovern, etc. And by using the draft to find offensive line depth. And that's kind of where I disagree with Leger's philosophy with the other picks he makes. I love the first round pick. You tell me a Dunze's there at 10, I'm in. The problem, I think, with Leger's perfect mock for the Jets, none of the players after a Dunze, none of the players that he selected are really going to help Aaron Rodgers from the standpoint that he didn't pick any offensive linemen. The other offensive player he picked, Michael Pratt in the fourth round, as a developmental quarterback. I don't have any issue with that. But his third round pick at 72 was Cole Bishop, who's a safety. And the other picks he made were defensive linemen. And he took a you know a running back wide receiver hybrid later on in the draft on day three. So 
they might have gotten some really good players there as far as value, as far as really good defensive players. Leger's breaking down tape, so he's watching all these guys, and he could form strong opinions. I can't sit here and pretend like I know who these guys are on D3, but from a you know organizational philosophy standpoint, I think if the Jets are going receiver at 10, don't they have to find a way to go offensive line in the third round? Or trade up to somehow get back into the second round to get one of these offensive linemen? I mean, maybe there's someone there in the third round they really like, but see, I, I, I like the Adunze pick. But I think if you go down the Adunze route, you then need to, at some point, pretty early on, address the offensive line. And that's where I don't like the rest of the mock. And let me also say this. Ideally, for me, the perfect New York Jets mock draft features the Jets trading out of 10 and accumulating a second-round pick and still taking an offensive lineman. That's still what I would personally love to see. Now, once again, if Roma Dunze makes it to 10, oh, baby. And with all the mocks seemingly having the Falcons taking Dallas Turner at 8, if you're the Jets, and a Dunze is there at eight. Get in front of the Chicago Bears and make sure you get him if that's your guy. See, trading up for a Dunze would not cost as much as trading up to number five, let's say, to take Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. Because if we assume it's going to go quarterback, 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 first receiver off the board, maybe at five to the Chargers. That's going to cost a lot. Moving up two spots to eight with Atlanta, that might only cost you one of your fourth-round picks, or maybe a pick next year. That's worth it. So that, to me, would be the other scenario where you could get a Dunze. The Bears maybe don't even take them at nine, and as Leger says, you take them at 10. But I think my issue with this draft is you're not addressing the offensive line anywhere. now. This is only a one-minute clip, so maybe Leger's thought process was, well, they have already signed David Bakhtiari. They brought back Connor McGovern. Maybe they signed Donovan Smith. Maybe the Jets had already addressed the offensive line in this scenario. And then Leger just felt comfortable going, best player available, and he filled receiver, which is a huge need. He obviously filled up developmental quarterback. Michael Pratt's a name to watch because the Jets sent their regime, their brass. Todd Downing was there at his pro day. We know they have a top 30 visit scheduled with Jordan Travis, the quarterback from Florida State. So quarterback on day three, I certainly think is a need for this football team and something they're going to address. I think my issue with that draft, though, once again, you didn't add any offensive line. I just think if you're the Jets, you got to add more depth. If you go receiver in the first round, I'm not anti that that philosophy. But then I think you have to come away with an offensive lineman with pick 72 or trading up. I think that's the whole key here. But let me make it clear, the top three receivers are gone or you can't trade up. I'm still pro, take the best old lineman at 10, or if you could trade back a couple spots and still take a lineman, great. I know everyone wants the trade back. I'm telling you, it's easier said than done. Don't criticize the Jets if they can't trade back. I'm sure they're trying to. But it's not easy. But I think taking a safety in the third round, that might be a little early, even if Cole Bishop is a really good value pick there. So I don't. I, I love the first round pick. I think organizational philosophy wise, there has to be some offensive linemen that are drafted. So that'd be the thing I'd push back on with our guy Leger. But I mean, if he's telling you Adunze is his favorite wide receiver in the draft, doesn't that tell you how talented this receiver class is? Because Marvin Harrison Jr. is thought to be the top guy. Now there's a lot of buzz, and I think rightfully so. Malik Neighbors is awesome. And then there's plenty of people like Leger who love Adunze. So I like the philosophy as far as the first round pick. I do think safety is something they could address in the draft. But if you're going receiver at 10, pick 72 to me needs to be an offensive lineman. We'll open it up to your comments, your questions, your calls. Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline is the place to be. Want to give some love to the Asmaniacs out there. Make sure you like the video. Comment, subscribe, call in. It all helps the YouTube algorithm reward you with as maniac memberships when our great listeners gift memberships out to people who are watching the show 
live right now. Today's Jake Asman show is presented by our friends at Circa Resort and Casino. Folks, draft megacast live from the largest sports book in the world later this month. We are going to be joined by special guests. We're going to be giving away different prizes, including, courtesy of ESPN New York, a signed Garrett Wilson photo. So be on the lookout for that during our megacast. It is going to be tremendous. And, of course, it's all presented by our friends at Circa Resort. It's never too early to book your stay at Sports Heaven. Simple enough. Largest indoor sports book, largest outdoor sports book. They got phenomenal restaurants, table games. It's Vegas, baby, and there's no better place to stay than the beautiful Circa Resort and Casino. Ask any of the Asmaniacs who made the trip last November. We had an absolute blast. You always have a blast when you stay at Circa. Shout out to Circa for sponsoring our draft show. All right, let's get to some calls. First up on the Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline today is Ricky NY. Ricky, I was rocking your hat yesterday. I hope you saw it. Yeah, I actually – I I did – was at work last night, so I didn't see the show last night, but I started watching it this morning uh, when I came in and, and I actually saw it. Like, I, I literally just got in like 15 minutes before this show started. So it was a long night, 15 hours. <laughs> you pulled a B man uh, the overnight shift? Yeah, I, I always do. That's my normal schedule. So, like, usually I'm asleep during the day. But but I do wake up for your show. I either stay awake for your shows or or I wake up. Uh, you know, luckily for me, they're usually right before I go to sleep or right when I wake up. So so timing works out awesome for me. I love it. Um, you know that's I I would have to agree with you about his mock. Like uh, you know I don't like the the ignoring the O line. You know, but like you said, maybe. You know, if we had already filled those needs in free agency, I could see that maybe. Uh, but man, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all for the trade back. Uh, but like you said, you know, you, you got to find somebody to do it. And whenever I've been doing mocks, I I never I've never I don't think have ever done a trade in a mock ever until like last week, and I got offered to move back with Jacksonville to 17 and, and pick up uh, like 48 and 96. And you saw the draft that I did uh, like, man, I, I nailed everything. Like, like I got offensive line. I got uh, a badass running back, a receiver. I mean, Oh God, I, I, you know, I would love to see a haul like that. And uh, you know what? Like, like I said the other day, you know, you might be able to criticize JD, uh, a little bit uh, with some draft decisions, but when it comes to trades, he is like second to none. And uh, let's hope that extends to the draft and uh, we see some more JD magic. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this year, man. I, I'm, I'm ready to get this draft going and see what we do. Oh, baby, Ricky. I mean, could you imagine if Joe Douglas is working the phones, he's trading up, he's trading back. The excitement from this fan base is going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm I'm pumped. Like I the, these next couple of weeks can't go by fast enough for me. Let's go. Let's go. Ricky get some sleep, baby. <laughs> Gonna be a crazy night, and we'll be live in Vegas for all of it. King and Dreams with a super chat. Shout out to you, King and Dreams. Good morning, my G. Donation to the Henny Fund. Heading to Columbia. Guys, get your passports. Jet up. King of Dreams. Safe travels, my man. That's awesome. You just visiting Columbia vacation? That's very cool. Safe travels. And always appreciate your support, King of Dreams. Thank you so much. More of your calls right now. Let's go to Simon, who's up next on our show this morning. What's up, Simon? Hey, Jay. Good morning, bro. So What's just, uh, I guess, two comments and, and a question for you. you know, maybe the question person discussion all right first you know look, listen to the last couple of shows and a couple of other guys like i'm kind of with you on if we could get indianapolis or somebody you know a couple spots back to come up that would be great understood that, to your point it is difficult but i think that would put us in a good position i think if you did that you're able to probably go more o-line still with the first round because i think there's probably more prospects that could be worth that level of pick let's say you're at 15th and like a receiver of is probably gone neighbor you know and, and them are probably gone i don't know that um brian thomas is someone 
I'd go at 15 that early. It's, I don't know, from what I see, it looks like it would be later. So I'm kind of with you there. But if we do stick and there is one of the, the big three, if you want to call them receivers, I think that'd be good. But, you know, to a point we make here on the show or people, callers you make often, Buffalo Jet fan, is – if you're doing that, you have to be able to, and I think it's reasonable to say in the third round, whether it's a early or a late third round, you, you got to be able to hit on a lineman, right? Yeah. And and we and we talk about that with other teams, and that happens. So I think, you know, the points you've made, um, the Jets haven't been the best at it. So I think if you're not confident you're going to be able to do that, Joe, or, or whoever, you probably want to, you know, stick with the line that first round where it's safer and there's probably enough talent where you, where you, you know, can't mess up. And then um, another uh, point, I'm, I'm down here on spring break. Uh, I'm in St. Simons Island in Georgia. I live in South Carolina, but there's a lot of Bills fans here for spring break. And I'll tell you, they are not happy. The the, the raping of, of their defensive roster has really left them, you know, I'm 42. So guys my age, you know, not, they're very unhappy. And then lastly, the question, and thanks uh, for the time, Jake. Um, let's say the Jets perform, and I'll define that as whether it's Joe evaluating Salah or Woody evaluating both, you know, a situation where it was well enough where either decision maker decides, hey, we're going to give these guys more time, right? So let's define it that way. If they perform and we go into year two, okay, so let's assume we have Rodgers for this year and next year. Now, you're going to have to give these guys an extension. That's going to probably take them past the Rodgers window. What do you see as, um, like, their strategy or, you know, how – Joe could effectively get someone in here to run the offensive program, right? We know, <laughs> we know Hackett is just for, for um, Aaron. I'm a huge fan of Aaron. I love what we're doing with this and everything, right? Um, but, you know, if they do extend them, they're going to have to start thinking about after that. And we're going to need someone to bring someone in as an OC or somebody to actually run this offensive program into the future. If we're going to say, all right, you know what, Robert, you, you got this team or whatever. You perform well enough. So I just wanted your thoughts on that last concept because I've really been rattling around. I said, I just, I just don't know how they're going to take it that way. So thanks for your time. That's, that's it, man. Good stuff. Keep it, keep it moving. <laughs> hey, thanks, Simon. Enjoy spring break. Look, it, it, it's an interesting thing to think about, but it right now it's, right now it, it's too tough to like even like picture what it looks like because like I need to know how this year goes, right? Like extensions. I mean, we can't extend the head coach or the uh, general manager until we see if they're a playoff team, and then are they, like, just a wild card team that loses in round one? Are they a team that wins a playoff game? Do they go on a run? I mean, you worry about all that, obviously, after the season. But, look, I mean, if, if Rodgers has a really good year and the Jets win, I think we'll come back and play another year. And then maybe they seriously contemplate – I got to sneeze one second, people. Oh, I caught it. Well done. Um, uh, but uh, the, the point I'm trying to make there before my almost sneeze ruined the show is – I think depending on what happens this year impacts the future, obviously, but specifically with life post Rodgers, how does he play this year? Where do the Jets end up picking? What's the quarterback class look like a year from now? If they took a quarterback on day three this year, what are the reports of how that guy is doing in practice? You know, could that guy eventually get an opportunity? There's just too much of an unknown. They got to win first and then it, it works itself out. I mean, if you want a great example on how it could work, the best case scenario is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You win the championship with Brady. He plays a couple more years after that. They then pivot, sign a veteran in Baker Mayfield, and they're still a playoff team that won a playoff game this past year. Like, that's the ideal scenario for what the Jets are a couple of years from now. And if you notice, the Bucs have a new offensive coordinator post the guy that Brady had, right? What's his name? Byron Leftwich was Brady's o- offensive coordinator in Tampa. Brady leaves. They got rid of him. Brown and Dave Canales. Dave Canales is now a head coach in Carolina because of the work he did with Baker Mayfield. So if you want like a comp for like what the Jets situation could look like, Simon, a couple of years from now, hopefully they win with Rodgers or at least they have tremendous success. Go to a Super Bowl. We're happy with that, all that. And then if that happens, I think Douglas will get an opportunity to either draft another quarterback, depending on what they do this year in the draft, what maybe they would do next year at that point, if they would take a quarterback pretty high or they just sign like a veteran. And I think in today's NFL, one thing we've seen, which was not the case in the past, we're seeing more and more veteran quarterbacks get the free agency. There's a lot of guys that are kind of in that middle tier that now hit the open market. Like Kirk Cousins is really like the first like good quarterback to become an unrestricted free agent. But now, like, we're seeing a lot of guys hit the market. And it's funny because Kirk Cousins, again, hit the market. But we're seeing guys change teams. You know, we're seeing more trades with quarterbacks. 
Like in the last couple of years, look at the notable quarterbacks that have been traded. Now, they all haven't worked out, but Matt Stafford got traded. Rodgers got traded. Russell Wilson got traded. Deshaun Watson, when he was still thought to be a good quarterback, got traded. So I think the post Rodgers plan is interesting to think about, but there's just too many variable variables to really break it down. So my best piece of advice, Jeff fans, would be don't worry about it. Just enjoy this year and maybe next year. And they win this year. You know, you have Rodgers for another year. And I, and I think you, you, you approach it from that perspective. Super Chats will cut our line. Shout out to everyone who was tuned in. We'll get to some channel member comments right now. Big Islander fan writes in, Jets should draft an offensive lineman regardless if they sign McGovern or Bakhtiar, Bacteria. Uh, I love how Francesa called him Bacteria. Yeah, <laughs> I would I would sign both if possible, and they should still draft an offensive lineman. I, don't, I think it's like a saying in baseball, you can never have enough starting pitching. I think it applies for offensive linemen. Pittsburgh Mike says, week one can't come soon enough. Tom says, Gus Buster special today. My God, does it ever stop raining, people? I moved back to New York, and all I've dealt with is rain. If you go to GusBuster.com, you could purchase the best umbrella in the universe. And you could use the promo code Jake, so you'll get 15% off on any of your umbrellas. Indian Rider says, love watching the show, Jake. I'm a Bengals fan, but somehow I care about the Jets, too. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. We welcome all fan bases here besides Bills, Dolphins, and Patriot fans. Everyone else is fine. Chef writes in, today is the tri-state. It's raining like cats and dogs. Need Charles Soup. <laughs> I love the Charles Soup emoji. It's the best. If you missed yesterday's show, things got contentious with Charles and the audience. Definitely check that out. GTA says, how you liking being back in New York? Lovely weather. Oh, my God. I'm going to the home opener for the Yanks on Friday. Hopefully it doesn't rain. It's not supposed to. Timothy writes in, remember when we took safeties in the first and second round? Oh, do I remember? We call that one the Mike McCagnan special, baby. Barbara writes in, seems like they like Carter Warren as a depth piece. That's also the unknown. We hear they like Carter Warren. Maybe Leger's thought process with his mock is he likes Carter Warren and doesn't feel like O-line is as big of a need because maybe in his in his mind they had re-signed Connor McGovern and Carter Warren's the swing tackle. Leger believes in him. I know Damian Woody, who played offensive lines uh, high on Carter Warren. He likes him. So that that's a perspective we have to consider too. Snowball says second round pick is a must. JD needs to get us one. I think he will if he can. I don't think it's as easy as people think think it is though more of your calls right now va the great what's up v8 what's up jake seems like every time i come on here me and you were talking about you know these critics talking about the just i don't know if you watch speak i love joy taylor but i don't know if you hear LaShawn mccoy keeps on calling aaron Rodgers the greatest regular season quarterback of all time and i just don't agree the shady can talk all the smack he wants but he was backing up everybody on that super bowl ring but far as the draft goes i don't know why i get an inkling that we may end up trading uh the vikings may end up trading with us hopefully they do and hopefully we can get that you know that additional first round pick what do you think about that look the vikings coming up one spot would be would be interesting i think it's probably more likely if a team's coming up it'd be maybe like the raiders behind them if there's a quarterback they like maybe denver denver coming up 12 to 10 like they throw you a third round pick i would do that and move back two spots I like that too, but I just know the Raiders don't have a second round pick. And I seem like we all of us Jets fans want that second round pick badly, but I don't have an issue with getting an additional first round pick if the Vikings are thirsty enough for JJ McCarthy. So, you know. But, yeah, but the, th- that- the thing is, though, like I- I- if they want McCarthy, they're going to have to move up a lot higher than just one yeah. spot. We're talking about getting in the top four or top five to get them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a dream of mine. Hopefully it happens. You know, let's cross our fingers. But other than that, Jake, love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. You know. Let's not pay attention to these Jets haters like, you know, Colin Coward. <laughs> I appreciate you, V8. Thanks for calling, man. Great job. Uh, we, we we don't respond to everything on this show, but the Coward stuff yesterday, I just felt like I had to get that off. I mean, that was just ridiculous. Comical. Amy writes in following up on what we were talking about. What if the Jets trade with Denver at the number 10 spot? Look, Denver does not have a second round pick, so they're an interesting team to look at here. now. You look at Denver's draft capital. I mean, I don't think they need to give up a two anyway to move up from 12 to 10. 
unless there's a quarterback and they're desperate. But if Sean Payton says, we'll give you pick 76 overall, which is three picks after the Jets third rounder right now, you wouldn't do that? I would. And for those who want a second round pick, there's a clear path to getting it if you have pick 73 and 76. You could package both and get back into round two if need be. Or package one of your thirds, one of your fourths. That might be enough to get into the back half of the second round. Right? And if that happens, you're set. Because then you still would have a third round pick and a fourth round pick. That would be good GMing by Joe. Adams is too cool for games, writes in. Who's under more pressure to perform next year, Huff or Will McDonald? I mean, I think it's Huff. He got the contract. He's replacing Hassan Reddick. Now, we don't really care what Huff does or the pressure he's on with the Eagles. Will McDonald's under his own pressure. More is expected of him. There's no question. But, I mean, as far as, like, which players under more pressure with their respective team, Bryce Huff, he's replacing an all-pro. Tim from Fishland, next up on the show this morning. Hello, Tim. Hey, Jake. You there? Tim, I am so jealous of your weather right now. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's starting to get hot again. You have no idea how hot it got last year. I lived in Florida for 30 years. I almost died on a driveway last summer. Um, first things first, the Jets have put Tua and Allen on notice with Reddick. Okay, that 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 is a huge signing on all because it's going to allow Quinnen to get up free. He's not going to be able to get double teamed. Same thing with JJ. Um, you know, list goes on. You have a pass rusher of that 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 stature. You you, you can't. He's a game wrecker, like Solid says. That's number one. Number two, I'm tired of the the what is it the the, the Bowers boys. Okay, what have we seen the last three years? Since? O-line, O-line, O-line. You win the games at the line of scrimmage. How many times have we seen the Jets try to, you know, take a shot deep? They can't because they can't protect long enough for a lot of the play to develop. Okay? You have to be able to win at the line of scrimmage in the NFL in order to win games. Okay? With, with a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, he can throw guys open. He can make a good receiver great. Al Azar, why do you think he's making $11 million a year from us? Okay. I just don't think reaching for a tight end at 10 is smart. Now, if you trade back into the 20s, okay, I could see it. Okay. But I'm not – the O-line the is the number one thing because a lot of people, they always talk about Tyron Smith being hurt. Tyron Smith's born, been more durable and more healthy than Elijah Vera Tucker. That's my concern. Is AVT. Okay, yeah, they were freak injuries, but he's been injured the last two years with season big time injuries. And a big man on Achilles, that's that's you know what I mean? That's that's troublesome. So I look back to trading back into the teens and maybe getting the, the Fuaga, the guy who could play guard and tack. Okay. Yeah, Tim, I, I appreciate the call. All fair. Uh look, the AVT stuff. I, I'm going to lean on the fact he's young and has had these kind of freak injuries and he'll be fine. But if you go back and look at games played, Tyron Smith played more than AVT the last two years. So that's fair. Now, Tyron Smith, though, has not played a full season since 2015. He's averaged since 2016 half the amount of games played in the regular season. So the idea that the Jets are just set on the O-line, that's not true. And they're also on one-year deals with both their tackles. So I still think anyone who says they've solidified the O-line, it's not a need anymore. Come on. You can't honestly think that, do you? There's no way. So, yeah, I, I look, offensive line, offensive line, I, I, I'm all about it. I, I think a Dunze is too good to pass up, though. And then you've got to solidify your offensive line with that third round pick, or if you trade back, you solidify that player by obviously having to hit on maybe a, a second round pick if you got a two, or if you got a third, you're trading up. Yeah, there there are some guys to like. I think Blake Fisher is an interesting tackle, played opposite Joe Alt. 
I think uh, Patrick Paul from Houston's an interesting name to look at. So there, there are guys. You got to find them. And that's that's really the big thing. You have to find the right players. Today's Jake Asman Show presented by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Folks, Underdog has baseball pick them available. So if you're a baseball fan like I am, thank God baseball season's here. Sign up for Underdog. Get your pick them entries in. Promo code ASMIN, and you'll get your deposit match up to $100. Carlos Rodon is on the mound today for the Yankees. Yankees Diamondbacks. And right now, you could get Aaron Judge in one of your pick for 1.5 total bases, higher or lower. I love Aaron Judge higher than 1.5 total bases. Juan Soto, 1.5 total bases. That is right now juiced up. It's 1.1 times higher than the normal amount. So I'm going to do Judge higher than 1.5 total bases. Juan Soto higher than 1.5 total bases. So those are my two Yankee picks. So let's lock those in. And then we need one Diamondback selection. Carlos Rodon, love you, man. But I don't know if he's going to have more than six strikeouts. We'll go lower than 5.5 strikeouts. So those are my three. For the Yankees, I now need one for the Diamondbacks. Merrill Kelly is pitching today. And after the Yankees did not hit yesterday, Merrill Kelly is going to give up some runs today. Higher than 2.5. Earn runs around uh, allowed. That's a $10 entry at Underdog. $10 to win $61. My pick is in. I will share the link in the live chat comments if you guys want to play along. So I just made live on the show my Underdog pick. For Yankees and D-backs later today, you could take my picks and follow, or you could fade. Your choice. Underdog Fantasy, promo code ASMIN, sign up and get that deposit match up to $100. All right, more of your calls, more of your comments and questions. As always, Super Chats will cut our line. Make sure you guys become as maniacs by hitting the Join button, or make sure you turn on Gift Receipts so when someone gives you a membership, you have access to that. Let's go to Darren, who's up next on the show. Hello, Darren. Hey, Jake. How's it going, man? What's up, man? I'm good. To, I'm glad to see you in a chipper mood after the uh, beatdown you took last night. Yeah, I'd say it, it's not fun when uh, you, you know you're you're missing your. No, I don't. I don't want to hear about front. injuries. We don't talk about injuries in football. Let's not we talk do about though. injuries. What do you mean? With the Jets and Aaron Rodgers for four plays, of course we talk about injuries in football. Yeah, but we're not allowed to. It's making excuses. That's what well, all the other fan bases say. There's Even excuses, though we're the most injured team. You and know. then there's reasons. Exactly. There are reasons. Now, good win for the Heat. They're obviously going to be a tough out no matter where they end up. But it's just, it's very frustrating as a Knicks fan because they're 15 and 2 when OG Ananobli and Jalen Brunson play. And now OG's injury is completely derailed this season. So hopefully they can get him back and Randall back. Yeah, it'll be fun to see them both at uh, full strength. I'd like to see Hero back in lineup too. We're missing 22 points a game as well. Yep. So, yeah, that's it. But if we if we stick at uh, 10, it's just going to be boring. So everybody wants to trade up, trade down. But you know somebody in front of us is going to screw up. We're going to get a great receiver. We're going to get a great offensive lineman. I'm not a Bowers boy. So, yeah, let's hope that shit doesn't go down. Let's <laughs> just get ourselves something solid on the O-line for when one of our guys go down. You know, hopefully it's just for a game or two. But, but it would be real nice to move up. Harrison, a neighbor's. I think a doomsday will probably fall because somebody's going to do something stupid. So. Well, he, he might go nine, though. So I think if you're talking about trading up for a guy, get to eight with Atlanta. Atlanta still could get the player they were targeting at eight, and the Jets could get, in Leger Doosable's opinion, the best receiver in the draft. Yeah, he could be. Who knows? He's got all the skills he needs. He's fast. He's big. Contested, contested catch guy. So I'm all in for it. Anyway, Jake, have a good day, man. Good luck with your Yankees. Thanks, Darren. How's the how's the attic, by the way? I'm not in the attic. I can but tell because your internet's awesome. working. That's why. No, my internet works everywhere. This house <laughs> is like 18 feet wide and 70 feet high. I don't know who the hell built this house. I don't know why I bought this house. But I finally turned the corner, starting to get someplace. So I'm actually not so uh, down on life right now. But I have the same shitty weather you got in New York. As opposed to, you know, the fish boy that was on a couple calls ago. <laughs> the fish boy. I appreciate it, Darren. Good luck, man. 
Rat Diddy checks in. He's been a as maniac since the beginning. Seven months, baby. Yeah. Love them underdog picks it. Rat Diddy lives in the uh, Arizona, the great state of Arizona, in the Phoenix area. So, yeah, baby. He'll be representing Yankee Nation. I like the underdog picks, too. I think it's a big, you know, Yankee offensive bounce back today. So, we'll go with Judge. We'll go with Soto. Judge still looking for that monster game. It's still a spring training for him right now because he missed time. So, his timing's a little off, as you can see. And Soto doesn't have two bad games in a row. He'll get on base. If anything, he might just walk twice and you get over two total bases right there or 1.5. Ryan says, is Makai an option as a depth signing or is he gone for good? Gone for good. He will not be back. Gary, up next on the show. Hello, Gary. Thank God Becton is gone for good. That's that's, that's a win. That's addition by subtraction that Becton has gone for good. Um. This was the doozable that went to Central Florida and played for the Jets on the 2015 team? That This is the same guy that did this mock draft? Yeah, I think he played for the Jets for three total years. Yeah, LeJay Doozable. Yep, he's been on our show a bunch. Okay, what's he doing now? I, I, I That's a name I just never thought I'd hear ever again. What, what he, he's? It says in the thumbnail, CBS NFL analyst. He works for CBS Sports. Oh, he works for CBS. Okay, yeah. that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's cool. What do you think this looks like to you? This is what the perfect draft for my New York Jets looks like in the first round. Okay. Touche. All right. Hold <laughs> on. In, in the draft, I didn't see the draft. How did he have a – look, if we can get a Dunze at, not, at 10, that's a no-brainer to me. Like, you don't, I you agree. Don't, you just make it right away. Um yep. What did he have another quarterback going? Did he have two defensive guys going? Or how did he have a, a, a Dunze fall to, to 10? I don't know uh, how the first nine picks went, but in this scenario, a Dunze was there at 10. And there's an outside chance that, that, that this could happen, right? That, that a Dunze, because it just takes one team to screw up everything, right? I, I can't see him going past nine to the Bears because if you get Caleb Williams and you put him with a Dunze, like you've got something there. But like, I can't see it. If this happens, the, the Jets receiving core, I think, would be the best receiving core they've ever had. And I know everyone's going to talk about Decker and Marshall, but like Adunze is, I think, the best playmaker in the draft, right? I, if, you, if you have Mike Williams on one side, six foot four, Adunze on the other, and Garrett Wilson in the slot, that's one of the best receiving cores in football. I think it's the best receiving core in my lifetime, at least, the Jets have ever had. Yeah, look, I mean, they they would have a chance if you get Aaron Rodgers healthy to be one of the best offenses in the league. Because I think Conklin is good. Brees, as well, as a weapon that Rodgers could use out of the backfield. Oh, my God. I mean, Brees Hall would be, you know, <laughs> would be unguardable. Because you just would not be able to stack the box when you just had that many weapons on the outside. Agreed. And the other thing I want to say is I don't really – I'm not really interested in a trade down. And, and I'll tell you why. It's an all-in year, and I only want to trade down if I can get a two. And the only way you're going to get a two is if you trade all the way back. So, like, here, here's, like – if you trade down, like, 20, 22, would you rather have a Dunze at 10 or Mims at, like, 20 – and then Xavier Worthy in the forties. Like, what, I mean, would you rather just have a Dunze? Yeah, I, I, I'm. If he's there at ten, I'm not trading back. I, I would just take him. Like, it's an all-in year, as you said, and I'm getting, in the opinion of some, the best receiver in the draft. Like, I don't. Like, a couple of years from now, it wouldn't be shocking if Roma Dunze is the best player at that position, as good as Marvin Harrison and Emily Malik Neighbors are. I have them personally ranked higher, but I mean, we're not talking about that much of a drop off. Like, there are some years that Dunze would be the number one receiver in his class. He's just in a great receiver class. So, um, yeah, look, I'm still team trade back if you can get a second. I don't believe that to be realistic until I actually see it. So I'm operating under the, the premise that you take the best player at 10 or you move back and if you could pick up an extra top 100 pick, a third-round pick, and still get one of these offensive linemen, or maybe they love Brian Thomas Jr. and they get him in a trade back, I think that's okay too. If a Dunze is gone... You can still get Bowers at 10, and that's a win. Um, I want to ask you, are my Mets finally going to get one today? They play at one. No, they play well, at six. They're I think the, the Yankees needed to lose one before the Mets could win one. So I think I think the Mets are a good bet today, Gary. All right. You got to go up the snide. I don't want to be 0-5. That's right. Thanks, Gary. Jay. Thanks for the time.
Gary, a proud Bowers boy. Everything in the Discord. Brock Bowers? I would pick Brock Bowers. And, like, I just want to say this to Gary. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! God. Freedom House says, I think Garrett Wilson's going to go down as our best receiver. If he stays healthy, he will be the greatest receiver in Jets history. And I'm aware Don Maynard's in the Hall of Fame. I think that's the talent Garrett has. He's that special. I don't think people realize how hard it is to go over 1,000 yards with eight different quarterbacks the last two years. Like, it's ridiculous. Tony G writes in, V-Man, the last rum bender. We haven't heard from V-Man in a couple of days. David writes in, if we are all as maniacs, then Craig from Australia is a Tasmaniac. <laughs> we love Craig from Australia. Craig wrote in our Discord this morning, he's traveling to Paris right now. So, safe flight, Craig. Or if you're watching this after you already landed, then I hope it was a good flight. Roger writes in. Hey, Jake, what are your thoughts about taking wide receiver Xavier Worthy in the third round if we take a lineman in the first? Worthy, fastest man ever in combine history. There is zero chance he's there in the third round, Roger, for the reasons you just wrote. Tom B. writes in, Kristen Jones from Texas had a great senior bowl. Should be available in the third. Maybe take a shot at Zinter. Zinter's interesting because if he didn't get injured, he'd be going a lot higher. So I'm intrigued. Amy writes in, Jets should get an offensive line guy, but will likely draft Brock Bowers or a wide receiver that Rodgers wants. See, I don't, I don't think they're asking Aaron Rodgers what he wants. I think they're making this pick with him in mind, but I don't think it's like Rodgers, like, I demand they take this guy. I don't think it's working that way. Dan says, Jake, what happened to Brunson last night? Complete no-show by the Yankees. Cortez needs to go. We can't be mad about the Yankees. They, they were going to lose one. They're facing Zach Gallen, who was starting the All-Star game last year. He's a good pitcher. I mean, they're they're 5-1. and one. Worst case, they lose today. They're going. They're 5-2 and two after s- starting their, their season in Houston for four games against a team that's owned them. They won every game. And if they lost two out of three to a Diamondbacks team that was in the World Series, the last three games of a long road trip, so be it, right? Nothing to complain about with the Yankees. Yes, Nestor needs to pitch better. He had a rough first inning for the second time in a row, and then he settled in. So maybe every time Nestor Cortez pitches Yankee fans, we we bet the higher on .5 first inning runs scored, and then he settles. That's what we got to hope. As far as Brunson, look, Heat are a good defensive team. The Knicks, it just Brunson's asked to do a lot right now, man. Like, they, 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 they need to get OG and Randall back. That's the key. The Knicks, I think, could beat anyone, probably besides Boston, if they're fully healthy. And and they could give Boston a real run. I, I do worry about Randall coming back from this injury, though. He's a, he's a guy that he's a rhythm and timing type of guy. So, I you know, I just wonder about his ability to potentially, you know, go out there and, you know, get back into the flow of the offense and be a, a high-impact player. Those are the questions you have. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he no sleeping. Adios mio. <laughs> hey, Jay, how you doing? V-Man, we ask and we shall receive. There yeah. we go. Honestly, what do you expect last night? I mean, look, you're you're playing the defending NL champions. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a rough outing. At least one of those games. I mean, there's no shame in losing to Zach Allen when you haven't lost all year. It happens. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's going to happen. The, the, the best teams in baseball will lose at least 60 times per year. It exactly. It's going to happen. So there's no reason to get complaining about it, honestly. And the thing with the Knicks, yeah, they need, they need to get healthy. That's, they're just banged up. It's, it's all right now just limping. They're going to limp their way into the playoffs. There's nothing we can do about it. It's just what? the only hope is that they can get healthy when the playoffs come around. What's up with the uh, the the deck of cards there, V man? Are you uh, are you a, a a casino dealer now? No, I was just uh, putting them away. I'm just shuffling them before I put them away. Are you a card guy, V man? Not really. So what are you doing with the cards? Why were they out in the first place? Yeah, I was just playing a a little uh, rummy with a friend. So you are a card guy? Not really. It's occasionally, like I play it occasionally every now and then. Mm. Are you a solitaire guy? Not really. No. Have you been to a casino before? 
Uh, like you mean like actually been to a casino or someone took me to a casino and like I when I was like actually been to a casino or like just happened to walk by a casino. Like you've been inside a casino. No, never. You've never been physically inside a casino. Nope. So you've never played blackjack before then? Nope. What about roulette? Nope. Okay, well, when you play roulette, I feel like you have to put your numbers on. Two, nine, three, nine, and seven when you play, all right? All right. And, I, I, and I'm aware I said two and nine twice. Yeah. No, but honestly, with this draft that's coming up, it's yeah, because we should actually talk about football. Because this is a football channel, so it's like I still, you know, there's a lot of talk about obviously going, trading up, trading down. I'm just like I don't really know right now. I just feel more just stay put. Let's see what happens. You know, right now I want to see what just see how see how it falls before. You know, I just feel like just staying put, seeing what you get there. That's just my honest opinion. You want to disagree with it? That's fair. It's all everyone's free to their own opinion. I would like to trade if there's a trade that presents itself. Now, let me ask you this. Victor, who's watching the show, wants you to do a magic trick. Do you know any magic, B-Man? Nope. Would you consider becoming a magician? Nope. No. All right. All right, Beast. B-Man, thank you for the time. I'll, we'll let you get back to shuffling cards. All right. That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> V-Man the Magician, maybe. Gator writes in. Let's get back to talking about football and shuffling cards. Pittsburgh Mike says, plot twist. V-Man's an underground casino dealer. Yeah, I, I think V-Man's playing coy there. I think he's been to a casino before and... He's like Zach Galifianakis in Hangover. Using his mind, counting cards, winning millions. Green and white pinstripes checks in. I'm hoping Charles calls in soon so we can find out what he had for breakfast. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, let's get back to the calls right now. NY Jets Florida is up next. NY Jets, you got to stop wearing the Buck sweatshirt. It doesn't make any sense. I'll buy you a Jet sweatshirt to wear. Okay, that, that'll that work. I'm only, I only do this when I literally roll out of bed and go to work. Um, I have a feeling that uh, V-Man has been questioned by police or, or, or IRS agents in the past. He gave some... He he doesn't doesn't want to answer you know direct answers. They're kind of around the around the periphery answers. So I wonder if V Man's got a law enforcement or some kind of experience with with that kind of thing. But Jake, let me ask you a question. Um, I would prefer a trade down. I, mean, I like Bowers too, but I would prefer a trade down, and I'm willing to go late into the first round and take like a Powers Johnson or Fatanu get a second rounder. I don't think Odunze is going to be there at 10. I think that's a pipe dream. I think he's receiver 1A. I, I, I think he's so close to uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. that I don't think he can hardly separate those guys. Would you entertain Chris Jenkins in the second round? Um, he's a m monster run stuffer, dog player. Um, we need that kind of guy in the middle. He, I mean, obviously the the ties with the Jets with his dad. We can always, you know, take take a third rounder, move up to the second for a receiver, or or stay in a third rounder. But I, I would love to get a dog like Chris Jenkins in the middle because that guy was all over the ball when whenever you saw Michigan's defense on the field. Yeah, look, you would need a second round pick, as you alluded to there. I mean, I'm open to it, obviously, but. You know, because because if you're taking him in the second round, that means you're able to trade back, and hopefully you went offensive line, and then that would tell me the Jets are pretty confident they could get a receiver in the third round they like. So I'm open to it. I mean, look, I know people don't love it because oh, it's a defensive tackle, but he's really really good, man. So uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm open to it. Obviously, if he if he if he's 
you know, 80% of his dad, he's going to be a hell of a player and certainly worth that pick. I mean, Chris Jenkins is a beast. So um, I, I, yep. I don't think they're going to go down that path, though. I'd be very surprised. Mm. You never know. I mean, uh, I guess it all depends on how they feel about uh, um, Lazard coming back with Rodgers and what else we can do with, uh, you know, how the draft falls. Because like everyone said, a lot of people are, you know, there's, there's always a monkey wrench in the first round where there's some bizarre picks. Let's just say that, that throw Holy. throw the draft order into chaos a little bit. So, but uh, that's about all I got, Jake. I'll, I'll try to wash this shirt and come out with a jet shirt tomorrow because I won't be working tomorrow. So I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to do that. I just don't have it in me to ever wear like opponent teams. Like I, I will only wear Jets gear. Like I just, I like it, it would be painful for me to wear any other team's merchandise. Well, I won it at a golf tournament. I, Jake, I literally wore this last night to bed. So when you're self-employed, you, when you're self-employed, you got to roll out of bed and, you know, do things at certain points. So, but I get it. I, I, I'll try to do better tomorrow. How about that? Hey, that's all we could ask for. Appreciate your call and why Jets, Florida. I mean, I'll ask the chat. Should we allow NY Jets, Florida back on the show if he's wearing the Buck sweatshirt ever again? I'll let the chat decide. You know, we, we're we're a, we're a show where we listen to our audience. We want, as you know, CP the franchise, my guy says for his Knicks channel, for the fans, by the fans, that's what we do on this channel as well. He's a nice guy, NY Jets Florida. See, NY Jets Super Fan says, yes, he's a nice guy. Jason says, no. Freedom says, no. JT says, no. Tom says, get rid of it. First day Jets, nay. Shadow Realm, no. Yeah. Look, I think the people have spoken so far. He's not allowed on the show with the Buck sweatshirt. Only Jet gear. Now, you could wear gear for college football teams or for the XFL or UFL or for any other sport. For instance, I'm a Yankee fan. If you wear Mets gear, there's nothing wrong with that. Or Nets gear or Rangers. I hate the Rangers, but Rangers gear. Or Devils gear, that's fine. But Tampa Bay Bucks, we can't have this. The fighting Todd Bowles, even though I have no ill will towards Todd. He was not a good coach, but he's a good guy. Alan wants to know, will Cole be on the next few Fridays? I can call to annoy him. Cole will be on this week, 9 a.m. Eastern. We will start. We'll go for an hour, and then I'm off to Yankee Stadium for the home opener. So, yes. Adam is too cool for games. Cooper BB being a backup guard makes a lot of sense for guard depth if we get a second rounder. Yeah, I like him as a prospect a lot. I think, as you said, they need the second rounder. Adam writes in, we all like the Zach pick when it happened. Will McDonald will become good. JD is good in the draft and good with free agents. Let him cook and stay to rebuild the next Jets team for years to come. Adam, they have to win. Why does Douglas get such a pass? The reason why they haven't won is because of his quarterback selection. Not Salah, who he hired, by the way. If Salah had a better quarterback, he might have his limitations as a coach as far as this team ever winning a championship. We don't know. But I promise you, if he drafted a better quarterback or found a, a better backup last year, didn't go into the year with Zach Wilson, signed Gardner Minshew a year ago, he would have an extension right now. They'd be in the playoffs. This idea that Joe Douglas gets to see through another rebuild if they don't win this year. What are we talking about? How how many years do you get? How many years do you get? Once again, I like Joe Douglas. I I argued for him to, to, to not be fired last year when a lot of people in this fan base wanted everyone out. But I, I, I don't understand how there's people in the fan base who just blindly say it's all good what he's done when he drafted Zach Wilson and then did nothing to find a solution in season last year. That That's a fireable offense, you could argue. And I still said he's done enough to, to warrant coming back, and he's had a good offseason. But why, why would you say before this team makes the playoffs where something they haven't done since 2010 haven't had haven't had a winning record in eight years 
and we're going to sit here and say JD is good, let him cook and stay for the rebuild Jets team for years to come. Years to come, but they missed the playoffs this year. He doesn't get years to come. How does that make any sense? How do all of you blame Salah when it's Douglas who's more to blame for why this team missed the playoffs the last two years? Not the head coach. And I don't even think Salah is a great coach. I think it's it's very much up for debate. I think the best thing I could say about Robert Salah is it's to be determined. I don't think he's a bad coach. I don't think he's a great coach. I think he needs a quarterback for us to properly evaluate. But, man, I like Douglas. But, like, this is crazy talk, Adam. I'm sorry. Crazy talk. Mr. J. Biz says, feels good to catch a show live. Hit the like button. Boom. Give me those milk thumbs, as our guy Greenbean would say. Right now, we're at 172 likes, which is absolutely pathetic. We got 400 people watching right now. Hit the like button. It's free. It helps the channel grow, and it goes a long way towards you getting an Asmaniac membership for free when someone is nice enough to gift it for you in the comment section. r and says, Ozzie Newsom made mistakes. Also, so do all good GMs. Let them correct the mistakes. That I agree, r and I Once again, I have been a Joe Douglas defender for a lot of his tenure. But I'm sorry. Robert Sala gets a disproportionate amount of hate relative to the blame and criticism that should be evenly div divvied between him and the GM. Last year is more on the GM than the head coach. How many games was Robert Sala supposed to win with a quarterback room compiled of three guys that likely won't be on week one rosters in 2024? How many, Jet fans? Everyone says the Jets had this disaster of a season. They won seven games. The three quarterbacks they won the games with, Zach Wilson, no one wants him, will probably be either a number three quarterback inactive on game days or on a practice squad. Tim Boyle, practice squad. Trevor Simeon, either out of the league or practice squad. How many games should they have won? And we're going to blame Salah and say he should be tarred and feathered. Enough. Douglas and Salah, until this year plays out and we see what it looks like, are attached at the hip. Because if you're going to kill Salah, then who hired him? Who hired him? Like, that's what people don't bring up. When you lose, you're a loser. I suck. Joe D sucks. We all suck. They all suck until proven otherwise. That's the mentality right now, Jet fans. Matt Siegel's watching the program. Thoughts? On second and third tier quarterbacks in the draft that we could go after in the fourth, Travis Melton Rattler. I would throw Pratt into that too. Michael Pratt from Tulane in Leger's ideal perfect mock draft we played at the beginning of the show. That was his guy. I like him. We know the Jets have interest in Jordan Travis, top 30 visits scheduled. Melton, I don't know. Rattler, I like the upside. You know, he was thought to be a first-round pick a few years ago, so there's talent there. He was the MVP of the Senior Bowl. I like those options. Let's give some love to Matt Siegel. His wonderful girlfriend, Sage, has recently become a huge viewer of this show. I was told by Matt that she watches every day. She sits in front of the TV with Matt Siegel, and they watch the show together. How cool is that? Shout-out to Sage. Gary says Rattler isn't lasting till day three. You think he's a second round pick? I think he goes in the third, but anything's possible. VR says ESPN this morning was talking about the Jets not being out of the running to pick a quarterback at 10. God. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. No, thank you. No, thank you. David says, smash the like button. Everyone, let's go Jets. Hell yeah, baby. We're five away from 200 likes. Keep it rolling. Let's get back to your calls right now. Southern Jet is on the line. Southern Jet, set us straight. Hey, good morning. Um. The thing, I saw Leger's uh, thing. I just joined in 
just a couple minutes ago, sorry. But uh, the problem I have with the people saying as far as drafting an offensive lineman early and they're not going to contribute, that is such bullshit because we, you know, say we're on a 10 to 12 play drive. You don't think the 10th pick in the draft offensive lineman is, would probably come in and maybe give uh, Smith a breather, or if we're on an eight to nine play drive turn, and then, you know, the other team is three and out. It's going to happen several times a game, just like he's going to be put on a pitch count in practice. So I don't buy the fact that a offensive lineman, even though we're set with Moses and Smith is not going to see the field. That's absurd. It's, it's not the, the way Jets. the NFL works. It's the Jets. We never get lucky with injuries. So why why not do everything to guard against it? And this idea that it's like, oh, it's an all-in year. You can't p- take a player that's not going to help you. That's such nonsense. And also, ideally, you're never picking this high again, Rich. So you have two free agent tackles a year from now. And they're both older players. Like Ideally, you take one of these guys at 10 or in a trade back, and that guy's your next to Brickashaw Ferguson for the next 10 years. And why can't they get a breather during the game? It's fair. I mean, Morgan Moses last year playing with the, uh, you know, the the pectoral injury, he needed to come out for some games. They had him on uh, a rotation. There's nothing wrong with that either. Like, if that's what you got to keep him healthy, great. And we already heard that Smith's not going to, you know, do a ton of practicing during the week. So I don't, like I said, you get it with Aaron Rodgers now and Brees. We could have 12, you know, I know it's shocking and people are going to have heart attacks. So, you know, we could have 12 play drives and stuff, which, my God, that would be like, you know, I might be, you know, like Fred Sanford if we did. But, <laughs> um, but, but, but it could happen. And then you turn the ball over quick. I mean, to me, it makes sense if you got a, I'm not talking about a seventh round pick, but you got the 10th pick offensive tackle. Shit, put him in and give, give Tyron a breather at that point. Well said. Well said. I mean, like, to, to me, Unless you're getting one of the big three receivers and they're absolutely in love with them. That's the only scenario I could see the Jets passing on going offensive line if I was Joe Douglas. I I don't see the Bowers hype at 10. I don't think they're going to do it. I know people like the idea of it. I don't think it happens at 10. I don't either. And and like I said, I I am pissed off at the people that say the guy's not going to contribute to the Jets this year because they will. They will give breathers. And like you said, in an injury, but they will give breathers even if there's no injury. And like I said on one of my tweets to you, I'd like to see the Bowers boys in a uh, uh, WWE uh, or whatever it's called, battle versus Amazon Prime's the boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that new season's coming soon, right? June, I think I, I saw can't it. wait, man. Especially for that one guy with that special talent. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I haven't... Uh... Yeah, I haven't thought about the the show The Boys in a while. That is a great show. I'm glad you're a fan of it, Rich. You don't strike me as a fan of that of that kind of genre. I love it. Oh shit, I, I'm a I'm a Trekkie, uh, uh, and uh, all science fiction. That's you main, Star I'm Wars not, guy. No, I'm yeah, I am because I love science fiction, but I'm more into Star Trek than I am uh, Star Wars. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, The Boys is a great show for those who are looking for a show to start. Amazon Prime. I'm so behind on shows right now because of this move. I still got to catch up on like three episodes of Curb. So I I, I got to get back into it at some point. It's tough right now. I mean, we got every sport going. There's no time. Watching baseball. We got hockey. We got basketball. I don't get to watch too many shows during the year. Lini's watching the show. She's using her one super chat of the month for being an as maniac. For the love of God, please stop with the Zach Wilson crap. I'm done with it. Period. End. Amen, Leany. You speak for everybody. You speak for every real Jet fan. He stinks. Enough. We are tired of the Zach Wilson discourse. He will be cut or traded for a seventh round pick with the Jets eating a lot of the money. This doesn't end either with him going to some team and burning the Jets. They said that about Sam Darnold. How'd that work out? I mean, to the Zach Wilson truthers. We do not care. All right. Let me quote Mike Tomlin. Small health court Chester with a super chat. 
Keep up the great work, Jake. Wide receiver, round one. If there's a guy they love at 10, fine. I'm not, I'm not anti-receiver at, at 10. Ryan says, Jackson Powers seems like a perfect pick for the Eagles. I mean, in theory, he could be good for the Jets, too, in a trade down. He could play center and guard. I think they need more tackle depth, so you want someone who could play guard slash center, but he's a elite prospect. Amy asking about him as well. Adam says, top three receiver or O-line at 10 if we don't trade back or up. Look, sign me up for a Dunze at 10, best O-lineman at 10, or trade back. NYJTV says, give me Bowers or give me death. Stop it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. I'll take Bowers in a trade back if they're getting a second rounder. That's the one time or one scenario you could tell me they ended up with Bowers, and I'd be like, okay, I could live with it. Jet set for life. Didn't Rodgers say he wanted to be part of the organization beyond his playing career? Could you see him stay on as a quarterback coach or offensive consultant? I mean, the rumor is Woody basically gave him equity in the team as part of the, the deal, right? Like, he'll sell him a piece of the team like what Brady has with the Raiders after Rodgers retires. That's not substantiated, though. I'm not really worried about if Rodgers wants to be part of the organization after he's done playing. If he does, great. We'll worry about that when he's done playing. I hope he plays for another two, three, four more years, to quote him. Gonzo says, I'm assuming most of us support trading back, but you're right. Much easier said than done. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, everyone wants to trade back. Not every team can trade back. Big Islanders fan. Islanders, one point out of the playoffs. Isles, Rangers, first round. Please, no more Zach talk. Let me tell you something. This Islanders team is baffling. They win last night. Shout out to Bo Horvat, who scores every clutch goal imaginable. But they very easily now could lose on Thursday, tomorrow. And this is what they do. It seems like no team wants that last playoff spot in the East. But, I mean, this Islanders team has just been so up and down this year. Who knows? I, I hope they go to the playoffs so I could go to some playoff games now that I live back in New York again full time. But I'm not counting on it. Matt says, order of most wanted championships. This is a tough one. First off, I won't complain about any of my teams winning a championship. Let me make that clear. But the Jets would be number one. I think the Knicks would be two because I've seen the Yankees win before. Yankees, three, Isles, four. I love the Isles, but hockey's my fourth sport if I were to rank them. Now, that being said, I don't care about any of my teams, order of which they win a championship, just win a championship. But the Jets would be number one by far. That's tough. Green Gang says, looking at Wentz getting another deal, do you think it was a mistake not giving him a shot? Yeah. Do I think it was a mistake? I know it was a mistake. Did you watch Zach Wilson play football this year? You mean to tell me Carson Wentz would not have been better? J-Rod says, do we win a Super Bowl in the next two years? Yeah, I mean, if you play Madden, you can win one every day. Darren says, we need to find a way to see, sneak Zach into it. Uh, we're not doing it. Darren, we are not reading your comment about Zach Wilson. Burn Enough. Stop it. Tony says, imagine how crazy New York would be if the Knicks and Jets won in the same year. You mean like the last time the Jets won a Super Bowl? The Knicks also won their first championship? Ralph says, would you trade a Super Bowl in 2025 and stink for the next five years? So what happens in 2024, Ralph? So th this question is hilarious, right? When I trade a Super Bowl, let's say it's this year, and then the Jets go back to being bad for the next five years. Yeah. What, 
what's changed, <laughs> right? right? It's stink for the next five years. I, as if the Jets haven't stunk for the last 10 years, 13 years. They've had one winning season in eight years. Yeah, I'd sign for this. What's changed? It'd be what I know most of my life. So, yeah, would I, would I trade a Jet Super Bowl for them to go back to being bad for five years? You mean like what I've dealt with for most of my life? Yeah, I know how to handle it. I'll take the Super Bowl. This is a no-brainer. Any Jet fan who says otherwise, I'd be shocked. Now, when you talk about stinking, there's levels to it, right? Like, are you like six or seven wins where you're not like picking high enough to get one of the top quarterbacks? Or, But either way, yeah, I mean, of course I would take this. Hundred percent. I've watched the Jets stink the last thirteen years. I'll certainly take five more years of stinking if you tell me there's a Super Bowl after that or before that. Adam says the Bauer boys are diehards. You all almost have to respect their commitment. I hope if the Jets do take Bowers, he's asked about the Bauer boys and the fan base. Hawk says, I would trade a Super Bowl for five years of two-win seasons. I think most of us would. Dan says, fan base will be in shambles. First moment we see an image of Zach in a practice jersey at one Jets drive. It's not happening. Mr. Bonesy says, I just ordered a giant sweatshirt to wear to work and to sleep the night before. Bonesy trolling NY Jets, Florida. I love it. Derek says, bad for five years. That's it. I know. I mean, have, have you paid attention to the Jets from 2011 on? They've had one winning season. <laughs> They've been bad. I can handle five more years of it if you tell me there's a Super Bowl coming this year. Ryan says Tom Thibodeau getting fined. Probably, but he's right. Jalen Brunson gets so unfairly officiated. Let, let me get this rant off my chest. Only the Knicks could finally have a superstar that can't get superstar calls. How? Have you watched Jalen Brunson play? It's ridiculous. He gets mauled. Mauled. And he's he scored 61 points the other night against the Spurs. He only went to the foul line six times. It's insane. Thibodeau was right. I love what he said. He gets no calls. How does a New York superstar not get calls? We, the Knicks finally have a superstar. We have been dealing with op opposition superstars for years who always get the calls. How do the Knicks not get the calls? Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. First day, Jet says, we already did bad for five years. Credit for time served. Seriously. Hawk writes in, okay, Jake, real question. Would you trade a Super Bowl this year for the next 10 years of Zach starting for the Jets afterwards? I already told you, we are not mentioning his name. Into the shadow realm you go. There is not a more delusional fan base in this town than the New York Jets. You guys are acting like they've won the freaking Super Bowl. I've got an idea. Boom. We will see you later, Hawk. Mr. J. Biz says, I like Brunson. He's not a superstar. What is he then? He's going to be first team all NBA. He's in the MVP conversation. He is a superstar. Who is a superstar? What's your definition of a superstar then? Someone tell me. Christian wants Brendan Rice. So do I. He wants to be a Jet. So that'd be awesome. Big Daddy writes in, first two picks have to be O-line and receiver in either order. I'm good with both. I am good with that. VR says, I miss Circa. Best pool and big screen combo in Vegas. Tough to beat, man. Tough to beat. Gary writes in, we should take Bowers at 10. Well, you made this point a million times, Gary. We will see you later.
I can't do it, Bowers boys. Can't do it. I hope I hope he's great if they take him. I hope they take him in a trade back if they're gonna take him. Ricky writes in, Jay Kristen Hackenberg was Zach Wilson before Zach Wilson. Ah, yes. Who could forget? The great Christian Hackenberg, who played a grand total of zero professional snaps in the NFL. Who could forget? And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. And recently we got this. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Unbelievable take. And then yesterday, Aaron Rodgers is not as committed as the other older quarterbacks of his generation. We conveniently leave out the fact he is the second oldest player in NFL history to win an MVP. Big Daddy, can you see Sutton trading or Denver trading Sutton to us to move up two spots? No. I do not. Mike wants Knoble with the 10th pick. I, I st we still don't know who Knoble is. Lane was not sure when he called back in yesterday. Ryan says, I'm okay with multiple O-line picks. You should. Last chance to get in here before we wrap. Super Chats will cut the line. Become an Asmaniac and get your shout out. Hit the join button when you do so. And you get access to all the perks with your membership. Later today, we will be joined by the Buffalo Jet fan, by the way, in his weekly spot. 5 p.m. Eastern is the projected start time for that one. What should Buffalo Jet fan and I discuss? Let me know. Amy says, didn't he win a Super Bowl? He did. Aaron Rodgers, you mean? Yeah. Jay says, is there any team that goes against the mocks and takes a player they weren't predicted to take that shakes up the draft? Look, I, I, I do think there's the, that scenario where right now we're talking about four quarterbacks in the top ten. What if there's five? What if Denver is so desperate to get a quarterback, they move up to Atlanta at eight? Todd says, let's get Dobbins. I would take I would I would sign Dobbins for RB two, sure. Who would you draft Olu or Rome if they're both there at ten? I would take Roma Dunze. Roger says, did Rogers win two Super Bowls, one as far as backup? How old do you think Roger uh, Rogers is, Roger? No, Far Farb won his Super Bowl in the late nineties against the Patriots. Rodgers only has one Super Bowl. He wasn't on that Packers team with Favre. Ryan says, have you considered doing any UFC content? Random question. Yes, um, but it will be more so I do on the radio, and then I'll share that on YouTube. I, I don't think I have enough of a following just to do UFC content. But, you know, Dana White's always been great to me. So, you know, once I start getting some more consistent shifts on ESPN, I'm going to get him back on the show especially leading up to UFC uh, 300 coming soon. Dan writes in, Jake, can you customize your members' month badges like McAfee? Great point you bring up, Dan. That's the next step for Asmaniacs. So if anyone wants to come up with members' monthly badges like what McAfee's channel does, and you email them to me, I'd be happy to use them if we like them. So that's the next challenge for the Asmaniacs. If you want to design the customized members month badges. I'd be happy to upload those and use those. So please check that out and shoot me an email if interested. We'll throw that out to the audience because we got some really creative people out there.
FPP says, when are you going to do just first time callers? Uh, we'll set a date for that. We've, we've got, since I, I talked about doing that, we have gotten a lot more first time callers, which is great, but we will do a show where it's only first time callers, but I got to give advance notice. So hopefully first time callers call in. J-Rod says, are you going to the first home game? For which sport? Yankees, yes. Jets, week one this year. Assuming work doesn't get in the way. Yeah, I plan to be there, 100%. Neil and I are running it back. Um... Ricky wants Trey Benson to pair with Brees. Look, they've taken a running back every year. Douglas has been the GM, so it's not impossible they do it again on day three. Mr. JB says, a superstar does it year in, year out. Let's hope Brunson does it in the playoffs and again next year. Did you watch Brunson in the playoffs last year? Or... The, the run he had when Luka was hurt with the Mavs when he got them to a conference finals. Jalen Brunson's a superstar, people. The guy always plays. He is one of the most efficient clutch scorers in the league and never gets superstar calls. I mean, have you seen what this Knicks team has done without OG and Randall? Why, how do, why do you think they're winning right now? Or staying afloat? Greg says, Dobbins, too much of an injury risk, maybe another option for RB2. I still think Zeke Elliott would make sense. He's good in short yardage. He's a good pass protector. I'd be open to him. Hit the like button if you're tuned in right now. We are now over 200 likes. Appreciate everyone who has tuned in to the show. It has been a doozy. It has been a wild one. I want to thank everyone for watching. Shout out to everyone on Patreon. Yesterday we gained a new Patreon member. Let's give some love to Famous Jones again. Appreciate that. Appreciate everyone for taking the time to watch today's show. Join me on Patreon for bonus content and Discord access as well. Once again, my name is Jake Asman. Buffalo Jeff Fan will join us later today at 5 p.m. Eastern unless there's breaking news and we got to go early. Until then, I'll talk to you guys soon. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. You're a degenerate gambler and you're in your mid-50s. Who bets on the Jets? Uh, who, have you not learned anything about betting? The Jets are going to come back. No, they're not. They're, they're never, never going to come back. They're never going to come back. Hey, Bill's Mafia. You're in the wrong stadium, you friggin' a-hole. You guys football fans? I think the Pats could take the conference this year. I mean, the Dolphins are overrated and the Jets are choke artists. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Deeds. Well, why is that, though? You own the Jets, Deeds. I do? Whoa. That sucks. You think that scares me? I'm not scared of you, you pansy. Yeah, I'll put my whole fist through your face, you friggin' a-hole. Hey, keep moving, you hump. Who do you want to win? The goddamn Jets. <laughs> <laughs>